Okay, so I have moved my character. I have moved its shadow. I have started to grow ice around it. I have changed the atmosphere. I am ready to save my next keyframe. So first I save the Photoshop. And now I export as a JPEG. Keep all the defaults. You can see all the ones I've exported down at the bottom of my Chrome browser. And now I'm going to label that number five. Oh, not number five, because I'm not quite to where my sketch is yet. So I'm going to call this instead 4B. It's an in-between between four and five. But already I can see this is my first keyframe. And then this is my most recent one. Big change to the environment and to the creature. And the key to animating is that all those changes make sense when shown in sequence. And you see how those crystals are now like snowflakes falling or frozen rain. All right. So now, can I go right to frozen solid with just his beak showing? I think I need at least one more. So I'll do a 4C. So I'm going to duplicate the background. Maybe not even. I don't think I actually need to change the color of the background, but I do need to increase these clouds. They're almost at their most ominous. And then for the character, I'm not going to change the shadow or even the character. Well, maybe I'll change the character one last time. And the shadow one last time. So I'm going to duplicate all of this. But it's getting a little ridiculous to have four different layers making up my character. So pretty soon, I because I'm freezing the character, I can just leave those and just build the ice around. I'm going to move the shadow a little bit. So it makes the setting a little bit more dynamic. And with the character, I'm going to puppet warp it one last time for the time being. Last time for today's demos, anyway. And I've isolated the um, the beak now, or the bill from the fin, so that head can can kind of move just on its own. Because there's not a whole lot of movement in the body or the feet anymore, not now that they're frozen in ice. And I keep saying I'm going to do this, and now I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to adjust the colors on my character. Probably actually not with hue saturation too much. I'll desaturate them a little bit. But mostly with color balance. This is subtle. Hue saturation is a little too strong. So I just want to take some of that warmth out. Oh, I'm on hue saturation. So especially in the highlights. I want to shift it a little bit more towards the blues, a little bit less green or less red. Then in the midtones, a little bit of that, still very magenta. And then in the shadows, really push the blues. Maybe go opposite. Yeah, let it stay a little bit warmer in the shadows. I don't want to lose my character completely. From here to here. So now the colors are changing on my character a little bit. And I'm actually going to lessen the um, atmosphere. Well, I'm not there yet. But I think I will lessen the atmosphere on top of my character. Just because he's starting to get a little lost in it. But I am going to start building more ice. So one way is to kind of duplicate 
the ones I already have so that they become more opaque because because they're already somewhat transparent. And now I want to build up on top of that. So I can merge all that together, save some space. And now I want to bring in more ice assets. I love the blue of that one. And then there's this one, this big chunk of ice, which I can rotate. It matches the lighting. Distort it, kind of work for my shape a little bit better. And just being under the atmosphere, it already looks somewhat transparent, but it's not. So I'm going to take his transparency down a little bit, then erase away the hard edges. So 100% of the soft edged eraser. Have to rasterize it first. You see me learning the lessons of the class in real time. I don't love this black background for it, so I can, it's made to be a texture overlay, but I can delete that a little bit just with my magic wand, which is still on a feather, but that's okay. It just gives me more atmospheric effects. Okay, so if it's at 100%, looks like that. So let me use my feathered lasso. Get rid of the hard edges at the bottom and at the corner. Kind of created my own hard edges there. Soften them a little bit with my eraser. So often in animation you work backwards. So this might be kind of the solid block of ice, but I want, I want to build this a little bit. I'm going to put it up underneath the other layer. Hmm, and erase out. Parts of the other layer that are less more about the background. Come on, work with me. And then we just get to blending textures with textures and colors with colors. I want to bring more blue saturation into this ice. Because it's a black and white, I have to click on hue saturation and colorize in order to get that. And it will allow me to add a color of my choice using the hue, the hue slider. So I basically want that, but less saturated, a little bit lighter. And then take that opacity down. Now, transform it with Control T. Come on, this ice block. To fit around my creature. So I see his little tail peeking through. I'm going to use my magic wand with a feather of, let's do seven. So it starts to look more solid than the ice that's been formed so far. Change that up maybe to four. Okay, now let me play with so many little things. Uh, increasing the contrast 
really looks like ice by moving in both edges of the levels sliders. Okay, not too bad. But that's a big jump from where it was before. So now I'm going to duplicate that and walk it back. So this is kind of the working backwards. So now I'm just going to take away some from it because it's kind of creeping up the body. And instead of deleting it wholly, maybe I'll just take a low opacity eraser of it. Like that. Dim the overall atmosphere on top, which kind of muddies it. Okay. So now I have the creature I want. Yeah, I think that will work. For 4B or 4C. What else do I need? Some atmosphere. So I'll just start duplicating it again. And moving it. And then for the crystals, shift it and make it a little bit more opaque. All right. So I'm going from, if I look at my downloads, my last keyframe, 4B, I'm going from this to this. Yeah, and it definitely looks like a nice transition into getting kind of more frozen solid. Okay. And maybe I won't end up covering his, his eye just so we have that consistent focal point. We will see. So, save it. And then save it as a JPEG by saying export JPEG, keeping all the defaults. And then go into your downloads, labeling that keyframe. It's still an in between between four and five, so I'm going to call this 4C. And then pretty quickly, I know what I need to do for the next keyframe. I'm going to swap that back. And bring a little bit more atmosphere on top. Turn this one on now. And take their clouds to their highest point. Maybe add a little bit more of that. And then just creep this up a little bit more and erase away from the rest. 